What's up everybody out there? Uh, we're here today at the lovely Earth Cafe right in the corner of PCH and Cliff Street. <laughs> How cool is that little fountain? Such a nice little ambiance, the sound, great. This is their menu. We're past breakfast time unfortunately, but I think it's safe to say that I could still get French toast and you guys wouldn't. Ooh, you know. breakfast with the dog. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Or brunch with and, the dog. And look at the, the architecture of this place. This was the cottage restaurant. Most of you that are from Laguna know about this. The cottage had a long history of being one of our most distinguished restaurants and um, a lot of fun. And then it sat empty for quite a while and then Earth Cafe actually came in. Did a nice job of, of uh, keeping Re the architecture the same. And uh, it's commonly pretty busy here, but we just figured we'd come here today and, and check it out. What are you thinking of having there, young son? I haven't been here yet, so this is kind of a new experience for me. Ooh. I've heard a lot about it. Every time I drive by, there's like a line that goes like out <coughs> all the way under the street and around the corner. So I've always been a little <laughs> bit, um, you know, put off by the line, but yeah. it's, I mean, uh, it speaks to its, uh, it's probably its authentic taste and its... Uh, Food. So I'm gonna have a caravan kale salad and caravan see. kale salad. That yeah, and let's nice. see without the pita chips. Maybe they can give me some uh, potato chips or something. I don't know something. Yeah. Maybe just no pita chips. Okay, no All pita right? chip for you, man. Hey, you know we've been asked to do a topic, and we just figured we would start with it. It's a very important topic. Um, it's all about car accidents. How many of you have had a car accident? Raise your hand, please. <laughs> a lot of people. And um, that's what got me into this career in the first place. I did not want to be a, a doctor of chiropractic, but it was a car accident that introduced me to the benefits of chiropractic and, and turned my life and my health around. And um, so we've been asked to do a series. And the first one we're going to talk about today is how to avoid being injured in a car accident or how to avoid being whiplashed and then what the initially happens after whiplash what are some of the important things you should do by the way I'm Dr. Gary Arthur I'm a local um, California certified chiropractic doctor also um, been doing this for 30 years now and so um, so we're gonna do a three-part series the second one is what happens after the initial um, injury and how to, how to decrease the amount of trauma and injury that you've had. And then the last part is some of the long-term effects. There is so much research out on whiplash and, and what it causes and how to manage it and how to treat it. Um, you know, we could do a lot more than three segments on this, but. Um, but it's a big issue and affects a lot of people. A lot right? of people. So, I mean, that's kind of like why we choose certain things that we use. You know, the you know, the majority of us out there are suffering with these types of health issues. Whiplash, autoimmunity, low back disc herniations, all these types of things. I mean, I mean, we are, uh, we're fragile. A lot of things affect us. Well, we're designed to withstand a lot of stress and withstand posture. But I mean, if you think about the fact that so many of us have fallen off the, the diaper changing table, off the bunk bed, off the bicycle, off the toboggan, snow ski, water ski, snowboard, um, I said monkey bars already, um, dove it into the bottom of the swimming pool, or dove into the bottom of the swimming pool. Land on your head after doing a flip off the boogie board. Off the boogie board. Um, that's how he had his. Uh, then, then add in the sports, like throw in football, throw in hockey, um, even basketball. I mean, we've got so many possibilities of trauma to our head and neck. So what really is a whiplash? Well, at our office. Hold on, Mo's going to order some food, Mo. What are you going to get? Oh, what am I going to get? I'm going to get the Earth Farmer's Salad. Beautiful. And the um, fresh squeezed juice. But I'm wondering, maybe I'll add chicken to my salad. Okay. Yes. I'm thinking you should put that camera kind of on first to see how beautiful you are. Oh, wow, how kind. Here I am. Oops, hand in the way. Hello, everyone. Another amazing lunch with the doc today. We're just always loving our Wednesdays, so thank you for being with us. I want the first juice on the very back. Flip the page. 
Over there. That right one? there. Yep. Small. The juice bar? Yes. All right. All right, so let, what is whiplash? Whiplash basically means there's a trauma to the head and neck, much like this. She's going to zo zoom in on this, where there's some sort of trauma from the front or the back, or even from the side. And the weight of the head, which is that of a bowling ball, I actually brought a bowling ball today because the little known fact is 8% of a human's body weight is considered to be the weight of the head. So what they would do is they would take a cadaver, they would cut the head off, weigh it before, weigh it afterwards, and weigh it out. So this bowling ball right here, which is pretty heavy, this is 11 pounds, all right? Now, of course, I can do curls with it, but this is the weight of a 137-pound woman's head. So if you take a bowling ball and you hold it here close to you, it's pretty easy to hold it up. You hold it out here and the workload gets much greater. That's why if you think about a person's neck and all of a sudden there's a hit from behind or in front and the neck goes <laughs> with this kind of weight up here, there's about 2,000 pounds of force, they're called G-force, that can be distributed to the neck muscles. And in the process of doing that, people are always tripped out by how heavy their head is because it doesn't feel like our heads are that heavy but they actually are. Then what ends up happening is with that kind of trauma, either from back to front, front to back, or from side to side, then you can tear tissues in the neck that support the neck and help to hold it in the normal posture that it should be. Because a normal neck x-ray, if you look over here, here's an x-ray of what a normal curvature of the spine should look like before a whiplash. Here's what they commonly look like after a whiplash. Ooh, that's very different. Yeah, it's completely reversed. It should have a, a curvature on it about the circumference of a, of a you know, a, a basketball. But here afterwards, after it's gotten torn like this, now the weight of our bowling ball pulls it forward, and then it can actually heal like that. Now we're gonna we're gonna talk about what happens in healing on another one, but let's just talk quickly about the concept. Let me show you this. So, here's what happens. Come over here for a second. Just after a an injury, here's the, the role of chiropractic medicine in managing injuries. So, you have three days of swelling, up to three days of swelling, where the tissues swell, and then you get one day of what's called tissue congestion where it swells as much as it's going to and that triggers stage three which is the repair stage beginning five days after injury scar tissue is made for up to 12 weeks that's why it's so important the 12 weeks after whiplash lack of motion during this time causes scar tissue to be laid down in dense patterns which disrupts normal function that can lead to chronic scarring chronic stiffness, limited range of motion, poor biomechanics, chronic pain, weak muscles and ligaments, loss of normal sensation, increased risk of re-injury, and especially accelerated degeneration. It predisposes you to degenerative arthritis if your joints heal with this wad of scar tissue like this versus normal, or like this versus normal, and it heals in an abnormal position. And then your, your connective tissue <coughs> will remodel itself for up to a year based on the way they're healed in. Now the, the, the pattern of the connective tissue will remodel itself. <coughs> That's why they find that the, the effects of uh, whiplash, it's so important how we manage it. And you can take a person, for example, this is what the normal curve in the neck should look like. But I see people with all these severe distortions of their neck. Now this not only leads to chronic headaches, ne neck and back pain, but also low back pain because if you put your bowling ball way out here in front, it tightens the muscles of your spine going all the way down your back. So it's really important to get this fixed. Here's different things, you know, we do home care to help to redevelop the curve back in your neck. Here's a picture of an x-ray without something called a dental roll. And then you take a look at the, them using a dental roll. And then as they retrain and reshape their, 
their neck, then it, it uh, comes into a new posture and position. So just much like, you know, putting a decision to have a beautiful smile and get rid of crooked teeth while people go to an orthodontist, it's a choice. That choice is more for how beautiful you look and aesthetics. This one has to do with Don't how you beautiful you Don't you guys wish that you just had three arms sometimes? <laughs> sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Three arms and three waters. Yeah, brother. Sorry I interrupted you when I was Cheers. talking Cheers. about Cheers. Well, win, huh? Yep. Play stopper. Well, let's talk a little bit about whiplash, how prevalent it is, um, and then we can get into some ways of prevention. But let's talk a little bit about, about some that, of the, the stats. the prevalence of my clumsy water drinking skills. Oh, yes. See that? That was just yep. happened right Spilling. now. Uh-oh. That's a prevalent thing, clumsy. Let's see. Let's see, we got all kinds of stats here. I'm printing out some stats. Kind of helps around out the issue. Make drive home the point. Well, one thing is whiplash is five times more common in women than men. Huh. Why do you think that is? Well, it's more prevalent in women and children than men because the um, their necks are smaller, so they don't have huh. as much muscle mass to be able to handle the the trauma that they've um, gone through. Oh, interesting. The other thing is that um, I, I've told you my story real quickly before, but I was stopped making a left-hand turn into Kachuma Lake up above Santa Barbara, and I was waiting to, my turn to turn, but there were no left-hand turn lanes. This was back in 1975 to get into there. So I was waiting for all these motorcyclists with my car turned to the left, and I'm looking behind me making sure nobody's coming. Sure enough, I look back there and there's a guy just barreling down, talking to his girlfriend and his mom's, his girlfriend's mom. And he looks up and I see his eyes just go like this. I go, oh crap, I'm gonna get nailed. So I quickly turn my, my tires to the right because I would have plowed down all these motorcyclists that were on the left-hand side. I was waiting for them, to, their group to finish. And instead, when I got hit, I got launched way up this hillside I had a sunfish 16 inch, 16 foot sailboat on top of my Volvo wagon, uh -oh. and I saw it get launched in the air, slow motion, woo, woo. And everything, if you've ever been in a bad car accident, everything is in slow motion like you're in outer space. So I got a bad whiplash. My mom made me go to the chiropractor. I said, I don't want to go to chiropractors. Why not, honey? I, I don't know, chiropractor, I don't know. I don't, just don't do it. And, um, but she made me do it, and it really helped me. But the guy showed me my x-rays and said, you need a bit of care, you need to fix this so it doesn't turn into a longer standing problem. But at the time, the insurance company didn't tell me anything about that, um, that I needed to, if I wanted to get my car paid for, I had to sign off that I was done with treatment. So here I'm a 21 year old kid without a car, so I decided to sign off. Well, that was a mistake, because now I had health problems continue to get worse and worse and worse over the next five years. And then finally, five years later, another Cairo, explained everything to me and I decided to fix my body once and for all. Here's some things of how to how to handle not getting a, a bad whiplash. Number one is make sure that your head is only no more than an inch away from the headrest. So most headrests are adjustable now. Make sure when you're sitting comfortably that your head should almost be touching or slightly touching your headrest behind your head. Mm. Number two, make sure it's high enough so that the middle of the headrest touches the crown of the back of your of your head. You don't want it too low because otherwise your neck would go back over it. Oh. That's another thing. Um, you also want to make sure you wear your seat belts. That definitely helps. But seat belts sometimes can be challenging because you have something going across here. Most cars now are made to not get injured very much because they have spring-loaded bumpers. So your car may not show very much damage but your body may show a lot more because now you've got a catapult of that spring just whipping your head, neck, and torso forward. It's actually called a musculoligamentous traction injury. It means that your muscles, your ligaments, and your spine are all traction and injured in that regard. And so the big picture is that if you can do neck strengthening exercises, that's going to be helpful to avoid having much of a problem. 
if you are seeing that there's an accident coming, it's good for you to be guarded. They also say that a drunk person is so relaxed that their body just flies all over and sometimes they're not injured as bad. Um, so sometimes they'll kill everybody else, but they come out without much of an injury because they're so plastered and so loose. Um, then the other thing is um, make sure on your car insurance that you have med pay coverage. Just check with them because med pay coverage does not usually cost very much to add. That means is that if you are in a car accident, you have coverage to pay for your treatment afterwards and at least have 5000 It's a lot better to have 25000 Just in case you're injured, you don't have to come up with the money or have to have a lien case or find a provider that you know doesn't get paid to render the service that you need. So make sure your policy has um, med pay coverage. Juice and coffee. That's important. So those are some those are some pre Thanks, Juan. pre whiplash things. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that thing! Oh, it's my little cappuccino. Oh, look how pretty it is. Come oh, on, man. Oh, wow, I'm gonna have juice. to taste both of them. That's good. Got some beets in there, some good fresh enzymes. Some Carrots. celery. I didn't have any coffee today, so I was like, you know, a little midday. There you go. Midday. I can't have much after afternoon. If I had coffee at like 3 o'clock, I wouldn't sleep well that night. So sensitive. Yeah, I'm so sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see. What are we covering today? What else? Oh, here's the thing. Make sure you get evaluated quickly. Um, make sure you fill out a, an auto accident report to document what actually happened. Take pictures of the car. Remember that damage to your car doesn't have anything to do with how much damage there was to your body. Oh, that's important. And it does say in here that most of the damage happens to a person. Most injuries occur when traveling less than 12 miles per hour. These are all documented stats. Whoa. Because, I mean, the majority of the time you're driving around home, you're driving slow. You're not driving on a freeway. So the majority of accidents are going to happen closer to home because that's where you drive the majority of the time. True. Here's from a less than 12 miles an hour. That's yeah. pretty crazy. Here's uh, the Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. 2007, approximately 15 to 40 percent of those injured in automobile accidents will struggle with chronic pain for the rest of their lives. Whoa. That's why a lot of these people don't get managed correctly. That's why the initial care for the inflammation and the next 12 weeks is so important. If you do that, your chances of, of not having chronic pain go way up. So that's one reason why this is so important. It's serious that we're going through. Yeah. Talking about whiplash, because it can really affect the whole rest of your life. Absolutely. And if one auto accident can change how you feel. Yep. Whiplash injuries not only increase your chances of chronic neck and shoulder pain, they also increase the probability of other unrelated health problems. Wow. So we'll get into more statistics and, and statements and uh, research and, and things like that. I think the main thing to realize is um, make sure you call your insurance carrier. Make sure you get the other person's license. Um, license uh, California driver's license or wherever they're from and um, their their license plate call your insurance company usually you only have to have a $500 deductible um, and yeah just you know cover the bases ice usually is best I use also um, 20 minutes on 20, 40 minutes off on ice don't use heat initially um, don't go get into a, a jacuzzi right after a whiplash because it's going to cause more heat and more swelling. Huh? Make sure you put a make sure you put a uh, piece of paper towel or a light towel in between the ice pack and your skin so you don't get ice burn. Um, arnica cream or arnica homeopathics are helpful mm. to use. Uh, Tramiel is a homeopathic cream you can rub on the injured areas. I tell people to buy that all the time. Yeah. When people get like minor contusions or injuries, I'm like, you need to go buy Arnica cream. Like, yeah. Arnica or Tramiel, I actually like better. It's a combination of different homeopathics. And um, 
Yeah, see your chiropractor quickly. You don't necessarily have to have an attorney to handle your case, but just realize insurance companies will oftentimes tell you that if you don't have a thousand dollars worth of damage to your car, then they consider what's called a minor injury soft tissue called a missed case. And it usually means that they don't think you're injured. Although there's no research to support that. Actually, the research says that the damage to your car doesn't have anything to do with damage to you and your body. So make sure you um, get everything checked out early. Make sure you get the initial treatment that you need. Um, make sure if your car is going to get an estimate that you have a, um, a car uh, a mechanic do a laser beam assessment of the of the frame of your car to make sure that the frame or any of the undercarriage isn't damaged because a lot of times the damage is hidden to your car and it doesn't show up so and a lot of the the um, mechanics that your insurance company or the insurance company of the person who hit you want you to go to are people that are in their their network and they're purposely trying to make it so that there's not that big of a claim so one of my last patients that went to the insurance company's mechanic auto mechanic came back with an estimate guess what the estimate was to fix their car nine hundred and ninety eight dollars sound like they were trying to make that a minor injury soft tissue that they're not going to want to pay for. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So just be aware of the climate. Find someone that you trust to help you. I've been doing this for 30 years. Be happy to help you if you ever want a console. Usually there's a statute of limitation only uh, one to two years in terms of when you can make a claim. And research also shows that some people don't even have symptoms show up on the whiplash until two months later. That's what that says. Yeah, that's what that's in here. So there's a lot of good information. Anybody have any questions? I know we co carried, covered a lot of stuff. We did. Yeah, that was a short amount of time with a lot of good information. Yeah. Uh, do you have any um, crazy accident stories? Well, I just remember, you know, whiplash doesn't always come through. Uh, you know, car injuries, obviously. But I remember like being a kid and messing around with my friends, listening to like really loud, like classic rock and Hello, banging. how are you? Ooh, hey man, good. how's it how going? You? Uh, you very good. Ooh. Kill Sala. Amazing. Oh, you. Did you want chicken? I did. I forgot. And okay. Capri sandwich. Thanks, my friend. Enjoy. Have a good day. Uh, thank Gorgeous. you. I guess we're all going uh, vegetarian today. Yeah. Okay. Um, but anyways, I remember like this, you know classic rock with my friends when I was like 8th grade just like head banging because I thought it was so funny and the next day waking up and being like oh my gosh like somebody help me I couldn't even move my neck it was the most sore thing so even you know and then when you were in about 5th grade low, you know like that's like a low impact of just head banging compared to what could happen in a car accident when it just goes whack like a slingshot so I mean I remember doing that pretty pretty badly and yeah, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> A so story anyways. not to be shared, huh? Look at this panini, you guys. Look at that panini. Caprice. Well, we thank God for this meal, and we're so thank glad you that you guys all came by. If you want to come to Earth Cafe and check out their good, glory food right here, <laughs> then come on by and check them out. Yeah. Stoked that they hosted us today, and I will see you guys next week, Wednesday. Next week, we'll be Follow talking about... Um, how your body heals and, and what to do from the next stage once you've been whiplashed. Mm -hmm. What to do from there so it doesn't end up being likely for a long-term problem. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Right. All right. Stay healthy. You're amazing. <laughs>